I'm Ray, and say hi to Joe. Hi. Hi. Uh, Jerry Longo was a uh, uh, detective sergeant in our Connecticut State Police. He's now the top investigator at Mohegan Sun. And uh, he's got an interesting story. It has to do with a gentleman who for years yeah. has created what were called mass quantities of undetectable slot machine tokens. And uh, Jerry uh, caught up with uh, Louis Calavecchio at Mohegan Sun and put the cuffs on him. And we want to talk to him now. Sergeant, good morning. How are you? Good morning. How are you doing? Good to have you on. Good, thanks. Thanks for being with us. So when at, the, at Mohegan Sun were you first aware that Calavecchio was... Uh, was infiltrating your casino with uh, fake coins. Well, the story is a long one, but we're going to keep it short. I got notice from the New Jersey State Police right. that they were getting counterfeit tokens down there, and I was an investigator working assigned to both casinos, Fox with Dan Mohegan and stuff. Right. So uh, the way they caught him was inventory. Uh, what happened was he was bringing the fake tokens in, which were almost as good, if not better, than the original. Yeah. And they were piling up. Okay. Well, let's say the casino had a thousand ten dollar tokens. Oh, well, next Tuesday they had eleven $1 hundred. <laughs> you know, they aren't rabbits. They're not multiplying by themselves. Somebody's <laughs> bringing them in. So, so, we, so it became a uh, an accounting, almost an accounting issue, where we were monitoring the levels of tokens coming in every day. And uh, his big mistake was using hundred dollar tokens when he went to the hundred dollar slot machine. Yeah. Years. There's a heavier concentration of cameras on, on larger than on more. Yeah. So. Hey, Jerry, this is Sergeant, let me ask a question. I mean, yeah. did this guy make money? In other words, when he took, like, the $10 coin and used it to play a machine, was he, you know, was he making money? He was making, well, you've got to figure, if you could go to the casino every day and play for free, Oh. Whatever you make, it's what you make. <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. Yeah. Although apparently, from what I understand, he actually. Well, first of all, this guy is. It's fun reading about uh, Calavecchio because this guy had quite a history. He had a history going back to when he was a, a, a kid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the one of the first things he did was he ripped off the, the world. Uh, uh, oh, jeez. The uh, um, I don't know, the World's Fair. Yeah. Him and another kid made fake bus of the Ponte Vecchio, a statue in Rome, and they, they had made fake, like, uh, notes from the Pope and, stuff, and they were selling... God, <laughs> come on, really? Yeah, I was telling oh, Joe yeah, about he, this. He was, he was, he was, a, he was a master counterfeiter. Was, well, no, I was telling Joe about, about, the, about, about these things that they were doing. I can't remember the name of the SNS. No, it wasn't SNS, somebody else. But they were making these, uh, like, cashmere sweaters, which weren't cashmere. And which, and which, the first time you wash them, they fall apart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was, he was doing uh, jewelry and, and, and uh, oh, he would take stones into his into his possession and replace them with fake stones. He, this guy, you know, we actually ended up being friends, which is... Yeah, really I know. He's a, he's a criminal, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be one of the good guys, but he, he, <laughs> he told me that he liked me so much because... I didn't rough him up like they did in other jurisdictions. <laughs> and all that. But, I mean, they treated him bad. I don't mean with a hammer and chisel or anything, right. but, but they were rough on him. And, and I made an appointment with him to meet him, and I brought some cannoli and some coffee. And Aren't you some, guys? We yeah. sat and we talked, and then he talked to me, and he gave me information that we used and, you know, that was helpful in the industry. So uh, you don't have to be rough to get information. No. But you did have to put cuffs on him, right? Oh, I, I, I didn't cough him, actually. No. I mean, uh, technically, I, I processed him as a prison, yeah, but I met him at the barracks. He, met, he came and we met, and uh, when he when he left, they actually, a lot of news agencies had gotten word, and we, we allowed him even to go out the side door. So we, we he remembered that, and then he sent me a Christmas card, which is really strange. <laughs> I love this. Through, through headquarters, but, yeah. and I responded, and, and, and we ended up doing some speeches at some colleges, and it was just a weird relationship, and, you know, Jerry, i got to tell you, one of the things, I, 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 I'm i a big fan of the Boston mob, or, the, uh, yeah. the great, uh, Whitey Bulger and his crew. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, stuff that uh, Howie Carr writes about. But, I mean, it was it was like, you know, it was fun to read about Providence because they kind of loomed large in the story of the Irish Mafia up because they tried to move into Boston. They couldn't do it. It was very difficult. Right. But, I mean, there's... In so, this case, I mean, it, it was discovered that he was... He was given a lot of his startup money by the by the patri old patriarch. Yes, yes. My favorite. So Louis Louis uh, Monacchio, or a guy they call Baby Shanks, was running the thing at the time. And 
Jr. was locked up in federal prison, and I actually flew out to Illinois to interview Jr., and God. he sucked me right in. He, oh, he beat oh me. they're good. I got, I got all the way out there, got in the little room. He came in, he looked in the window and says, nah, I don't want to do it. I'm going back to the cell. Oh, wow. So I, had to, I never got to talk to him, but... Um, that's, you know, it's really weird because, you know, number one, Patriarcha. But I mean, who's the guy that gave some guy like half a million dollars? He was going to buy some property in Vegas. And some guy got a hold of some geologist and got him buying properties that allegedly had oil on them. But the, yeah. I mean, you're killing yourself. I mean, Patriarcha, you'd be afraid of that guy, Ray. Oh, Good yeah. old Ray. Yeah, yeah. Actually, one of Patriot, when Fox was first opened, we became really good, uh, closely connected to the Rhode Island State Police. And, and the intelligence units there, and uh, and and I would walk through with. They would make me flashcards of organized crime guys. That really? Pockets. So you'd be ready and for them. And I could pick them out, and I was giving them intel back and forth. And it worked cool. out really well for the both of us for a while. Hey, in doing research for this, I also yeah. found out that you wrote a book about the state police. How was that? What was oh. that like? Um, I, well, I contributed to a couple, mostly for internal, for our, our own consumption yeah. members and families and stuff on the history of the state police. But I wrote one through the Arcadia right. book company, which are those books you see everywhere on towns yep. and companies and, right. and mill towns and all that stuff. Really cool stuff. They're very easy to write. And I did one and on the state police. Um, it was pretty well received, but all the money goes to our, uh, our museum. We have a museum. Which you're still actively involved with, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the chairman of the museum. That would be actively involved. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm the president of the alumni association. So. Oh, that's kind of cool. I would say, how yeah. Has, yeah. How, yeah. Hey, how, in the time we've got left, how dip, much more difficult has the job of the state troopers become, Jerry, from the time you started to now? Um, I, well, i tell you, I, I have a different theory than most. Okay. Uh, or, or maybe you it's a shared theory, but it's not out there, I don't think, as much as it should be. My theory was, when I did what I did, everybody didn't have a lawyer or a cell phone. Right. Well, true. Right. And if something happened, if there was a shooting, let's say, involved with a police officer in Minnesota, you didn't hear about it in Connecticut. Right. But you hear about it instantly. Exactly. On CNN, MSNBC, your station, this station, that station. Everything's broadcast instantaneously. Yeah. I don't think anything's happening any more or any less than it always has been. It's just more broadly. Exactly. I think you're right. a great now. point. You know what? That's a great point. You know, Jerry, let me ask you a final question here from me. Yeah. Is, uh, you know, who's running? Is it individuals now that are trying to scam casinos, or is it an organized thing? Oh, it's both. Okay. It's both. We get hit from every single angle, um, inside and out. Sometimes there's collusion between our, our uh, employees at casinos and outside family members. Okay. But there are organized teams of cheats that go around. That's a whole. That's a whole other area. <laughs> well, you got well, a lot. That's your next book. You got a lot of stories to tell, my friend. We should get you in here for an hour. And yeah. Just, uh, wind you up and yeah. let you go because this is good stuff. Uh, Jerry, How, uh, do you guys pay? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> As Billy Preston once so nice eloquently goal. saying, I only look for I only look for donations. I don't take money. As Billy Preston once so eloquently saying, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. There you go. Jerry Longo, the retired state right. police detective Thanks sergeant. For Thanks, Jerry. Appreciate it. And by the way, the name of the book, if you want to pick it up, just about anywhere, is called uh, "You Thought It Was More." It's a Providence. Well, name. that's the that's the Calavecchio book. He's not. Yeah, yeah. He's not involved in that. Well, no. But, you know, <laughs> no, it's a good story. No, I understand that. Yeah. The old mob. God, how cool.